Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Great to have you here at peace as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. You know, last night the emphasis really is on God coming in the flesh, humanity, and taking on that humanity so that he could sacrifice himself for us. You know, Christmas Day's readings really are about emphasizing the deity of Christ, you know, that he came as John records in his first chapter. So we're going to hear that as our gospel reading today and focus on that too in our message. Let's take a moment to stand and greet those around you as we start today's service. Merry Christmas, Susan. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. In the name of the Father, who so so loved loved the the world world that he gave his his one and and only Son, and of the Son, who became flesh and made his his dwelling dwelling among among us, and of the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father. We are here to worship the living God who came to this earth to save us through his humble birth, perfect life, and sacrificial death. Jesus Jesus entered this world to live live perfectly in our our place, die for our our sins, and rise in victory victory for us. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the opening hymn. Angels from the realms of glory wing your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the field abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. On this Christmas Day, we prepare our hearts for Jesus by humbly confessing our sins to him. Through Jesus, though Jesus came to bring joy and peace, our lives are often mired in sadness and pain because of our own sin and that of others. Forgive Forgive us us for for Jesus' Jesus sake. Fill Fill us with with your word and and grace grace today. today. And And lead lead us as as we live live our our lives as as your faithful disciples. disciples. We pause for self-reflection. Be 
Behold, your Savior has come. The Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. As a called servant of Christ, I announce to you the good news. All your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Receive our praise, O Jesus, for you, for you are our joy and salvation. You are our Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. We pray. Lord God, we celebrate today the birth of your one and only Son, Jesus. Prepare our hearts to receive the message of his incarnation with renewed joy. We give you thanks, Father, that you sought us out even when we were lost and spiritually dead in our sin and rebellion. We know that we are undeserving to be called your children, yet we rejoice that you have chosen us to be yours by grace through faith in Christ. Amen. Amen. Testament reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our epistle reading is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. Long ago, at many times and in any, many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has sp- spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Christmas gospel reading is from the book of John, the first chapter. Please stand with me in respect for the gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May be seated for the sermon hymn.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, Merry Christmas. You know, by now, you've probably been able to uh, open some gifts. Uh, maybe you gave some gifts that were opened. I talked to some people last night. They had had some gift opening already a week ago because of the way family schedules kind of meshed for them to be able to celebrate Christmas. But did you ever receive one of those, you know, exciting Christmas gifts? One that you couldn't wait to use. One that was just like, you saw the picture on the box and it was like, you couldn't wait to open it and then turn it on and use it only to find out that it didn't work. <laughs> you know, and then you read the fine print on top of the box and it said, famous, right, famous words, batteries not included, and whoever bought the gifts forgot to get them and tape them on top of the box or whatever, you know. So today we want to make sure that we have the power of Christmas. You know, that we know that this little baby that came, that we celebrate his birth at Christmas time, is truly the Son of God who came in flesh, came with his power to save, his power to forgive, his power to defeat death and the grave and rise in victory. This is who we come to worship on this Christmas day. You know, when Jesus was born, there was a lot going on. You know, there was a census happening in the Roman Empire. I think it's, it's a little hard for us to really even kind of grasp what that was like back in the, in the you know, first century um, as Jesus was about to be born. And Mary and Joseph had to report to Bethlehem because they were from the line of David. Now, you know, if you think about this, and some of you have thought about this maybe in the past and gone through it in, in your Bible or maybe in Bible study, but the line of David was big. I mean, there were a lot of people in the line of David because David lived a thousand years before Mary and Joseph. So think of the lineage of a thousand years and all those people having to report back to Bethlehem. It must have been a little bit crazy. Romans were conducting the census. They probably had some sort of a census booth set up uh, in my, uh, I don't have a picture of this up here, but uh, in our own manger scene in our house um, one, one year, and I, I think... Remember when there was still a Kmart? You know, back when there was still a Kmart, Kmart had these uh, nativity sets and different pieces you could buy. And, and somewhere along the line, I bought a census booth. <laughs> and I don't even know that they make them anymore or are out there, I suppose on the internet somewhere. Um, and so it came with a couple Roman soldiers and a couple scrolls that were kind of uh, rolled up and, you know, a guy writing down names. You know, and that's what it must have looked like when Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem to be counted in the census. The city was packed with people. Lodging was scarce. Yet in the midst of all this activity, the Son of God was born. You know, we don't have much indication that people really noticed this newborn child, except for a few, of course, you know, from the Christmas story. We know that God made the announcements to the shepherds, and they came and worshipped Jesus. We know also that wise men showed up later, and we don't know how much later. We know within the next two years, you know, because King Herod had all those babies that were two years and younger killed in Bethlehem, the tragic part of the Christmas story, right? But we don't know exactly when the wise men came. Sometime after Jesus' birth, by that time it's referred to not as a stable or a cave, but that Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus were in a house at that point in Matthew chapter 2. But other than those folks, besides the, the shepherds and the wise men, we don't really have an indication in the Bible that many people took notice of this baby. Now we're told, uh, we heard this last night in fact, that the shepherds, after they saw Jesus, went out and spread the news, but we aren't sure that anybody really was listening. Maybe they were just all involved in their own family business or the census taking or trying to get to and from Bethlehem. It's almost as if kind of this good news that was for great joy for all people kind of got lost maybe a little bit in the shuffle. But we want to make sure that doesn't happen to us. You know, that this Christmas we come and realize that's truly Jesus God's Son who came to this world and He came to this world for us and that He did what He said He was going to do as our Savior 
and that he also keeps his promises for us today, which is to be with us always to the very end of the age, and that he's going to take us to be with him in paradise on our last day on this earth or when he returns, whichever comes first. You know, uh, I like Christmas displays. It's kind of fun. Uh, we had our grandkids uh, over a week or two ago, and so we, we were driving around Anago a little bit, you know, showing, showing the Christmas lights, and they're like, you know, when you're two and three years old, it's like everything's amazing, you know, to see those, those lights. And sometimes it's fun just to kind of sit and, and just observe them. You know, just take a few minutes instead of just driving by. You know, sit and just observe those lights. Sometimes, some families, there, there's actually a few in Anago here that have the, the whole light show going on, you know? Tune your radio to the right station and you can see the whole thing, right? Well, today we want to make sure, too, that we don't just have a drive-by viewing of Jesus. We want to stay and kind of ponder for a while what happened, what happened on that first Christmas. So John reveals it this way. He says in John 1, verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus, you know, He actually came to stay. The Bible version called The Message puts it like this. The Word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> so Jesus came to stay, to stay with us, to be part of our lives, not just kind of, you know, one time a year celebration and then we move on to the next thing. He wants to be part of our lives. Here's the amazing thing. God became a child to be with his children. How about that? You know, we are children of God through our baptism, brought into the family of God through the working of the Holy Spirit. Because of that call of God by grace through faith in Christ, we are made children of God, sons and daughters of the King of Kings. And yet that king became a child so that we could remain and be his children. If God appeared in all of his heavenly glory and started to talk to us, you know, in glory, we would never be able to handle that conversation. We would be overwhelmed. We would be overpowered by the glory of God. But Jesus came as a human being so he could converse with us, you know, so he could establish that relationship with us as human beings made in his image. He wanted to come and live with us and show the full extent of his love for us, which, of course, happened on the cross when he took on the punishment of our sins. He wanted to be one of us so he could show power over death by his resurrection with a body, with blood running through his veins, being able to talk and eat and sleep after his resurrection, show himself to hundreds of his disciples so we could be assured we're going to rise on the last day. Paul Metzger's commentary on this passage uh, puts it this way. The word gets down on all fours, speaking baby talk so that we little children can understand. He stops, stoops, and stays with us, showing us that his love for us is not just talk. You know, sometimes when we talk about God, it just becomes kind of this, uh, this conversation that's above our heads a little bit, right? God is spirit. We can't see him. He's invisible. God is triune. Somehow there's this relationship between the three persons of the Trinity, but we don't completely understand it. It's kind of beyond us, right? But in the incarnation, in the birth of Jesus, we see God coming, and we can see him as a baby. We can hear his voice. We can touch him. Well, we can't touch him exactly as the disciples touched him, but we touch him right here in the Lord's Supper. You know, it's interesting. John writes about this in 1 John chapter 1, his experiencing of Jesus. He says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, 
which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared, we have seen it and testify to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, of course, we could say, hey, John had an advantage. He was one of the 12 disciples. He got to see Jesus in person. He followed Jesus on a daily basis for three years. That's almost like over a thousand days that Jesus and John interacted, heard him speak, touched him, (laughs) interacted, saw his miracles. But you know, all of that's recorded for us too right here. You know, Jesus is called the Word for a reason because he comes to us through his Word to deliver the goods. He brings us exactly what John and the other disciples received, the truth, the truth that he entered this world to teach, to do miracles, to show himself to be the Son of God, and then to sacrifice himself out of great love. Not just words, but actions for us so that we could join him in fellowship. You know that word for fellowship? Some of you have heard it before. It's this Greek word koinonia. To fellowship means to be connected. It's actually the same word we use for communion. Uh, Communion is the word koinonia. So it means to be in common, to be connected, to be joined together. So when we come and receive Jesus, when we see Jesus, not just see Him, but believe in Him and follow Him, we're connected. We're connected to Him as our Savior, and we're connected to God the Father and the Holy Spirit, but we're also connected to each other as the body of Christ. That's why we're here today, you know? We come together to worship God as a church because He has joined us into His body. He has made us one in Christ. When I was growing up as a child, our family had a nativity set in our living room. And the way we celebrated Advent, at least one of the ways we did, was that each day starting December 1st, we would, we as me and my two sisters, we had three in our family, uh, would take one figure out of the of the nativity set from the box, and we got to place it in the manger scene, in the, in the uh, stable. And so um, it was always exciting. I just remember this as a kid of like, uh, which figure do I get to pick, you know? And of course, you had to wait. You couldn't put baby Jesus in too early. That was like the, the favorite thing to do was on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, whichever it worked out, that was the day you got to put in baby Jesus. So today, we want to make sure we see and we touch and we hold the Savior who came for us, the one who came in the flesh, the one who came to bring salvation to this world, to all who believe, and realize He has called us into fellowship with Himself. He has called us into fellowship with the body of Christ. He has called us to go out and proclaim the good news Whether people listen or not, I mean, that's up to the Holy Spirit, right? But to continue to spread that news that Christ indeed, God has come in flesh to save this world, and He's here now. He's a part of our life now as He continues to guide us, to watch over us, and to ultimately bring us to His heavenly home. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Together we confess our faith. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death. 
that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity, this is most certainly true. You may be seated. At this time we'll receive the offering. Gracious Heavenly Father, on this Christmas morning, we bring a portion of what you have first given us back to your altar as an offering of praise and thanksgiving. We pray that you would bless these gifts, that they may be used by Peace Lutheran Ministries to share your gospel message with a hurting world. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, all the ends of the earth will see your salvation. Lift our hearts to hope and joy in the celebration of our Savior's birth, that we would manifest this joy and witness to the world. Lead us to know and confess with all joy that the good news of our Savior as we celebrate Christmas. God of peace, look on the nations of this world. Give them a spirit of peace so that conflicts would cease and reveal through the birth of Jesus your great salvation. Lord of mercy, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Give peace to the troubled in mind and heart. Mercifully grant healing, relief, comfort, and peace to all the sick, to those who suffer, to the dying, and to those who grieve. Father, you graciously give us everything we need. Teach us generosity for the work of your kingdom. Accept the tithes and offerings we return to you, through which we display before the world our trust in your provision and goodness. Lord God, these things in the prayers of our hearts we ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand with me as we pray the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we continue with communion. The Lord is among us. We praise him for his gracious presence. We thank him for his love. We rejoice that he has come to be with us. It is good to thank and praise our God today and all days, but this day we especially remember that the very Word of God became flesh in Jesus Christ to dwell among us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in the saving faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with the body and blood of the Word made flesh, Christ our Lord. We ask that you would strengthen us in our trust in you and our love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now receive the blessing of our Lord. May Jesus, the holy child of Bethlehem, bless you and keep you. May this little child who took the cross on your behalf be gracious to you. And may he who promises to be with you always look upon you with his favor and give you peace on this Christmas day and always. Amen.